All right, so we're going to start out in Blender, then go over to ZBrush. What I'm going to do first is go into a top view and then add a new body of geometry in here, a mesh cube. I use cubes out of Blender or Maya or a modified cube within ZBrush. I never use, I try to stay away from ZBrush, ZBrush spheres altogether because their geometry is just way too wonky. Uh, they never quite sculpt right. Okay, so here's a couple tips. One, uh, ZBrush likes X, right? It's X um, mirror. So if I see here, I got X mirror right here. This is going to be my primary face in X. Okay, being said, uh, I will go into and make some UVs for this little guy in edit mode and choose to cut here, 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 one in the back, one in the back, one here, and one here, leaving this as a primary open face where I can get all kinds of cool detail. All right, so now all I do is hit go back into my UV image editor. On this one, I want to hit Control E to mark seam. And on this one, well, hit L2 to highlight everything. And then th this one, U to unwrap. There we go. We got a T. And the T is spilling forth onto the very edge of this thing. So I want to hit S to scale it and G to grab it. And I'm going to kind of just move it and grab it into the middle of the scene. Good. Now, let's also take and go into object mode and export this little guy out. This is going to be my primary uh, sculpting box. You'll see it's pretty sweet. Okay, on the desktop we're going to call this boxy and we're going to export it as an OBJ with everything defaulted and then we'll launch ZBrush and let me clear out my ZBrush and import that little guy in going tool import boxy click and drag out hit OK hit edit and then go over here geometry with smooth on, divide, 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 divide. And we want to divide up to about a million polygons. There we go, 1.5 million. Now, you're going to see a lot, a very large difference between what I did before and now because I'm going to go in and put several alpha patterns on here just to kind of show you how it works. So we'll choose this alpha pattern right here and add to this guy. It's got sharp edges. I don't want it so big though. Let's make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, another one I like to show off is this one. So I'll add one of those on that side. So in order to get really detailed here, make sure you get a, a wide variety of stuff and get used to it. Remember, keep it simple, stupid. Until you get used to it and then go on and experiment using the methods I show you and it'll be a little bit easier next time. Okay, this little goofy star in the back. And if I want some kind of radial fall off. There we go. So that's a good good level displacement. You got your sharps, you got your midlines and all have very high fidelity. High fidelity is like this. It has a change between the geometry's base to the outer ring. Okay, now let's go into texture and make a new texture. And I'll choose like 2048 by 2048. And hit new go down here, lower it all the way down, and I'm going to choose my second level and delete lower. 
go down to the normal map. I want a tangent space normal map with adaptive UVs. I don't want to smooth my UVs at all. And I go ahead and just create normal map. Generally, this will only take a few seconds uh, because it's just a sphere. Very important to note, if you're using the the AUVs or GUVs within ZBrush, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to get texture seams quite a bit. It's best to have U UVWs, which is what we did back in Blender. We made those maps to unfold, therefore it's going to have a lot less seams involved. Where AUVs and GUVs are just all over the freaking place. They, though they do have a larger uh, texture resolution, they do have a seam problem quite a bit. Alright, so there's that normal map. Let's uh, make a new one. Let's go with texture. Let's just hit 2048. 2048. Hit new. And let's go into displacement map. This time I want adaptive, no smooth UVs, and create displacement map. Again, this should only take a few seconds. I'll have three maps to export. Good. Uh, my last map, what I want to do is go into the alpha and choose that displacement map and make sure I have my radial fall off at zero. And go in here and just choose maybe this basic cavity stuff right here. This white cavity works out really well. And go in and do an alpha crop and fill. Yes, I do want to do it. And then now export all three maps. So what that did, it baked in all my um, shadow information. And if it looks a little harsh, you can just, this little dial right here, will actually lower it down quite a bit. And then if you want to do it again, just to kind of get the understanding that, you know, shadows don't look that harsh. Maybe I want something a little bit less, like this. Looks a little bit nicer to me. Okay, so... The first one I got to do is document export. And we'll call this, I'll put this in the Blender test directory. Call this vid underscore um, bake color. Let's keep it, keep it more industrial here. Okay, I want to export this guy out, so I'll just export him. Vid underscore displacement. And then I want to use that texture. Export. And we'll call this vid underscore normal. Last thing that you should do is also export your little guy out. Oh, which he has to be drugged back to the surface. Click and drag out, hit edit, and then go ahead and export him out. Now at what level? Don't care. Let's say, you know, that's a little unbelievable right there. You know, I might be able to get that, but maybe something like this would be a little bit better. There we go. Level 2. Export. And I'll call this vid underscore boxy. Okay, that's all done. Now we're going to go back into Blender in the next video and assign all those textures to the mesh and render it out.